This is a machine that could change our world in ways none of us have ever dreamed. Imagine if all our energy needs were totally free. It would mean the end of power bills. No more visits to the gas station. Fossil fuels will become redundant overnight. And pollution would be a thing of the past. The poorer countries could rid themselves from the ravages of famine, and deserts could be turned into oases. And here it is. A machine running without fuel, made for the future. A future that could alter the entire social, economic and political balance of our planet. All over the world, there are individual inventors, scientists and techno-mystics who are dedicated to this obsessive quest. And having come together via the internet, they now meet in small groups and talking in a techno language few of us would understand, they have just one aim in mind, to bring us free energy. We are going to have to go back to the basics, <coughs> stuff that we have forgotten. Anything go, greater than 100% is over unity. The unit produced like one and a half times more thermal energy than it took to drive. technology that claims that it gives, it, it's, a, it's a device, like a transformer with a circuit, with, you know, capacitors, inductors, I coils, whatever. promising technology that we'll see soon, I, I have to think it's going to involve uh, magnetism. The magnetics, yeah, it stands a real good place, but the one that can be in place first is the hydrogen. The world in, in a period of months, the world will change. Basically. Conventional scientists refer to believers in free energy as crackpots, conmen, or kooks because they work outside the current laws of physics and they believe there are a number of free energy alternatives to fossil fuels and nuclear power, including anti-gravity as a power source, turning magnetic force into usable electricity, Collecting energy from the sky. Free energy motors that can recharge their own batteries. Self-driven electromagnetic engines with enough power to put spacecraft into orbit. And of course, traditional perpetual motion machines that power themselves. Is it important? Of course it's important. Not only would free energy change our world, but it would also be the end of the fractious economy of oil. And of course, governments are afraid of it, and societies are afraid of it, because suddenly there'll be an equalization of power. I mean, when suddenly the power companies uh, no longer can charge you monthly bills, you know, and, and oil companies, yeah, there's a lot of negative stuff, and I'm probably dead just from saying this, <laughs> but... A lot of people think like that, and they think it's possible that we can make these little devices that will let you produce energy. You become totally free. Aldo Coster lives in a small village just outside Paris. He's a retired car mechanic who, for the past 50 years, has been obsessed with a single idea, to design the ultimate perpetual motion machine. A peu près 70. 70. Voilà. Recently, his story was picked up by French journalist and author Jean-Pierre Lantin. And one day, he got his first idea by working on a crashed car, and that was about 50 years ago, and he had this dream that in his mind would be, uh, would make him the equal of Faraday, Marconi, Edison, or Einstein. As a single-handed project, this giant wheel is an extraordinary achievement in itself. Standing five stories high and weighing more than 20 tons, Aldo Costa claims it'll run forever under its own power with no fuel and that it'll generate enough free energy to light up a small town. Flying in the face of conventional science, such a project inevitably attracts the skeptics, such as this man. Amateur thespian, full-time engineer and part-time scoutmaster, the self-appointed policeman of the free energy movement, 
Eric Krieg. For the past seven years, I've had a prize offer of $10,000 out for proof of free energy, which may or may not be a perpetual motion machine. I've talked to many people from around the world who believe that they will soon get my prize, but as yet, no one has showed up to take the test. Aldo Costa would have some difficulty in transporting his wheel from France to America, but with the help of Jean-Pierre, he sent Eric an email claiming the $10,000. Dear Monsieur Eric, I have constructed a perpetual motion wheel that will run forever with no fuel. Please, I would like to claim your $10,000 prize. Signed, Aldo Costa. There have been some complex working devices. They've been called perpetual motion machines by the inventors themselves. As for Aldo Costa of France, I don't know too much about him. There is not much on the internet. He is a relatively new contender for the perpetual motion prize. But you simply can't get energy out of nothing. Eric Krieg has history on his side. Over the centuries, there have been literally thousands of perpetual motion designs, none of which have ever worked, and it has driven many a good man to despair, fraud, madness, and suicide. What is important to understand about Aldo's work, if one wheel is not enough to generate much power, but if the system works, if hundreds of wheels in series could be constructed, it should be enough to generate power to the whole world. To understand the extraordinary claims Aldo Costa was making, here is a classic perpetual motion design, and there appears no reason why it shouldn't work. The weight of the falling balls turns the main wheel, which in turn raises the elevator that brings the balls back up to the top for reuse. At the same time, the wheel operates this generator, and we have a fuelless machine that will run forever, supplying us with free energy. Yeah, not quite. Unfortunately, the weight of the balls on the elevator, plus the friction of the various moving parts, together with the extra power needed to turn the generator, all add up to greater than the energy provided by the weight of the falling balls. So, fulfilling the current laws of physics, this machine wouldn't achieve a single turn of the wheel, let alone run forever. Now, as soon as you say, if perhaps the angle of the elevator could be a little less steep, and maybe the ball's a bit bigger, then you're in deep trouble. You are in danger of becoming obsessed by perpetual motion and spending the rest of your life divorced from your spouse and married to a machine. As Aldo Costa would tell you, obsession is a hard taskmaster. But at last, after half a century, he claims he has overcome all the pitfalls of perpetual motion. And if he has, this machine is a real threat to those individuals, companies and countries whose fortunes have been underpinned by gas, oil and coal, plus perhaps others who have a vested interest.